Good morning, Clarkston, and welcome to our fifth Sunday after Epiphany, February 7th, 2021 worship service. Thank you so much for joining us today. One brief but important announcement to share with you about an upcoming activity. As you all know, we are moving closer and closer to the season of Lent, and that, of course, begins with Ash Wednesday. Unfortunately, we will not be able to join together as we have in the past for Ash Wednesday because we're not in person yet. However, we have joined Reverend Williams and I in online service that is being put together by a couple of other churches, and that is going to be presented online to you uh, to uh, watch and participate in on Ash Wednesday on February 17th. But to participate in the service, in addition to the parts that Reverend Williams and I are playing in the service and the other pastors that are involved, you will receive an envelope in the mail. And in this envelope will contain a very small amount of ashes in a small plastic bag. And it will also contain some instructions for how you can participate in the Ash Wednesday service at home yourselves. Uh, we're going to ask you to watch the service online and follow the guidance of the leaders in the service. And then at the appropriate moment, you will impose the ashes either upon others in your household or maybe even on yourself. Um, it's a great opportunity to still participate in the season, this very, very important worship service, while at the same time finding a way to do it since we can't be in person. So I just want to give you a heads up that sometime later this week you'll be receiving that mailing from the church. So don't toss it out. Uh, take a moment to read it and set it aside and you can use it next, um, the following Wednesday on February 17th for our Ash Wednesday service. And if you have any questions about this in before the service as you're getting ready for it or reading the uh, message, do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you again for joining us today for our service. Good morning, Clarkston. Our scripture text for the morning comes from the book of St. Mark, the first chapter starting at verse 29, and it reads, And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and they told Jesus. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her. And she got up and ministered unto them. At evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door, and he healed many that were sick of divers' diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew who Jesus was. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there he prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they had found him, they said unto him, Lord, all men seek for thee. And he said unto them, Let us go unto the next towns, that I might preach there also, for therewith I have been called. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Clarkston. Today is the first Sunday in February, the first Sunday of Black History Month. And since Pastor is teaching on healing this Sunday, I thought it would be appropriate to lift up a spiritual. It's called There is a Balm, that's B-A-L-M, in Gilead. <laughs> Oh, 
to save the sin sick soul. You may not preach like Peter. You may like Paul, but you can tell the love of Jesus, how he died to save us all. to make the wounded whole. There is a bond in Gilead to save the sin sick soul. Sometimes I You know I feel I can't go on. Oh, but I feel the Holy Spirit. It comes and revives my soul. There is a bond. to make the wounded whole. There is a bond in Gilead to save the sick, sick soul. The story of Jesus is a miraculous one. From beginning to end, from top to bottom, it's hard to comprehend the wonder that accompanies almost every moment of this story. From being born to an unwed teenage mother to standing up for and caring for the most underappreciated and marginalized groups in his society, all the way to his sacrificial death as a criminal, and even to the church that has risen to this very point in time and in history. It's really a story to marvel at in many ways. It's also just as much a story to shake your head at in disbelief sometimes, at how many have so often twisted or manipulated this miraculous story for their own power, for their own profit, and for their own egotistical needs. By the way, none of which sound anything like Jesus' story, right? But when we think about miracles, and when we think about this miraculous story, we shouldn't really be too surprised that Jesus' miraculous story is full of miracles. Specifically, the healing miracles of Jesus can tell us a lot about who he prioritizes and what he really cares about. In today's story, Jesus heals Simon's mother-in-law. It's a pretty unglamorous story, simple to the point, not a whole lot of explanation, much like a lot of the Gospel of Mark, kind of straightforward. You see, he finds her with a fever, takes her by the hand, and then restores her to health so she can do her normal work of the time. But then before you know it, the word gets out, and a slew of people are at the door asking to be healed. And he continues to heal in various ways. And we're off. But Jesus' miracles don't just make people feel better. In fact, the more you look at these miracle stories, the more you see that the physical healing part is just one part of the bigger picture of why Jesus is doing it. 
The very first sentence in today's scripture says, as soon as they left the synagogue. Did you catch that? You see, it's the Sabbath, the day for preaching in synagogues, and Jesus is well aware of the rule against healing, against doing work on the Sabbath. He leaves the synagogue and goes to Simon and Andrew's house. Simon's mother-in-law is sick, and Jesus cures her. He does this one in private, inside the house. Only after sundown, the end of the Sabbath, does Jesus venture outside the door and start healing the many that are around, both sick and possessed, who came to him in need. We all know that eventually, Jesus will challenge the Sabbath rule in public, on a regular basis. Jesus' sense of social justice leads him to make a clear class preference in his healing ministry. One scholar puts it this way, Disease and physical disability were an inseparable part of the cycle of poverty of Jesus' time. You see, for the day labor, illness meant unemployment and instant impoverishment. You didn't really get a sick day off in those days. Also, the economic and political deterioration, especially in the time right before Mark was written, had dispossessed significant portions of the community and the population, especially in this densely populated rural area of Galilee. You see, Jesus' healing ministry is an essential part of his struggle to bring concrete liberation to the oppressed and marginal of the society of his day. So yes, Jesus sees the need in people's lives and he heals them. But he especially sees the need in the most vulnerable, those who have nowhere else to turn, those who have no way out if they can't fulfill their daily roles in the community. But there's more. Being a healer at Jesus' time was very controversial. Being on the margins was not only an economic reality. Illness was a matter of impurity or sin at the time. If you were ill, if you were diseased, if you were disabled, you were a sinner. The establishment of the time believed God was punishing you for your sins. Why else would you, your life be in such a mess? Jesus responds to this by breaking these purity code rules, by coming in contact with these sinners, the unclean, and touching them, and healing them, and giving them a place in society they could not achieve if they were still labeled as sick or unworthy. Look at all the things Jesus, is man Jesus manages to challenge in his miracles. One, socioeconomic societal norms, the caste system, people's whole ability to survive. Two, the impurity laws of the time that left those who were in the most need outside not included because they were labeled as sinners. Three, the established religious normalcy of the time. And four, those who were physically suffering and needed to be healed. Despite some of the rules, despite knowing it would cause conflict, despite knowing it would make a scene and draw just as much negative attention to him as positive attention, Jesus showed compassion and responded to injustice with his healings. His work is not only to heal the person in need, but to also heal the community, the society, the church, and to address systemic issues that were harming people in the world. May God give us the ability to see the needs of those around us 
and provide some type of healing for them that restores their dignity and proclaims their value as children of God. May God also help us remove the barriers that limit access and acceptance of all who search for a deeper relationship with the divine. Amen.